Okay, friends. So what we're going to try to do is use a couple free programs uh, in the Windows operating system to take a picture of this graph and then add what appears to be the best fit line. And if you look at these points, they're definitely kind of heading up on a diagonal. So it looks like they're a good candidate for a best fit line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called the snipping tool. So if you're in Windows, you can just type snipping. Uh, let me try that again. Snipping tool. And this is a really cool one. I bet you a lot of you already use this. Uh, Macintoshes also have something. Uh, I don't exactly remember the commands, but there's a there's a command you can look up for a Macintosh. And I just hit new, and then I can just draw a rectangle around what I want to take a picture of. So now that is uh, just a standalone image. And you can save this if you need to save a picture. Uh, you can save it to your desktop, save it to your folders, whatever. Um, you can actually even edit it right in here. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. The problem with editing it right in here is here's the pen. And let's say you use the blue pen and you try to draw a line. It's, it's, that's actually not terrible, but it's not, it's not super straight and I don't like where I put it. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that line. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click on the picture and copy. So now the picture is copied in the memory of my computer and I'm going to search for the program Paint, which is a really, really old school, these have been around since the 90s, uh, type of program. And I'm going to paste in this image, Control V, and there is the graph that I copied. So now in here, I can edit this picture. You can add text to it. You can remove just all kinds of things you can do in paint. Uh, many, many images in your labs and your notes and your homeworks. I, I use paint to, uh, to work on. Think of it like a diet Photoshop is basically what it is. So now what I want you to do is I want you to kind of approximate where the best fit line is. And I'm not going to tell you how to do this um, because I want you to, to give a shot yourself, but here's the tool I would use. I would click on this right up here. And that's a line. Now, if I draw a line right now, the color will be black. So if you want to change that color, you can click on, say, red. I'll make it red so it stands out. And then you just start by clicking down here at where you think one end of the line should be. And then you pull and you move the other end to where you think it should be over here. There you go. That's a line. That's, that's a I'm going to call it an okay fitting line. It probably isn't the most perfect best fit line, but it's not a bad fitting line. It, it's, it's fairly close to the points. It, it looks like it comes close to hitting a couple of them. Some are above, some are below. The actual best fit line will be a little bit different, but here's the deal. You can now approximate the equation. Remember in the previous one, when we had perfect linear data, we were able to get the slope and the y-intercept directly from the equation. Here, we're going to kind of reverse engineer it. We have the line for starters. We need to get the slope and the y-intercept off the line. So I'm going to give you some hints on how to do that. The y-intercept is probably the easiest, so let's look at that first. If you look down here, the y-intercept of the line is hitting right about here. Now, if you look at this is 0 and this is 10, that appears, I would call that maybe 2. So I think the y-intercept of this line that I just drew was 2. Yours is probably going to be different. If you put the line somewhere else, it will be different, right? Okay, good. Like if your line is maybe up here a little bit more, your y-intercept is going to be more like five. If your y-intercept, it's probably not going to be up here, but if your y-intercept was up here, or if your line, excuse me, was up here, it'd be more like 30. Chances are your line's going to be somewhere down here. Okay, so I'm going to put mine back where it was. Now, how about the slope? Well, what I'd use here is I would use the numbers that are indicated by the uh, input and output variables. So for example, I'm going to draw some lines in here. If I go from this point here, I'm going to make that a different color, yellow. If I go from this point to say this point, notice that I have gone six. That's a run of six. What's the rise? What's, oops, let's change that back to yellow. Okay. Now, what's the rise? Well, it starts here and ends up up here. So it looks like it starts maybe at, say, 24. 
and rises up here to about 40. So maybe 41, depending on how fancy you want to get. So it looks to me, if we start at 24 and go to about 41, what is that? That's a rise of 17. So it's a rise of 17 and a run of 6. So the slope of my line is going to be 17 divided by 6, or about 2.8, somewhere in that neighborhood. So the equation of my line would be a y equals 17 sixths, or about 2.8, x plus 2. Yours is probably going to be different because your line's going to be in a different place. And that's totally fine. We're going to have sheets do the perfect best fit line in a second. Okay, so you got a couple new skills in Windows. You got snipping tool and you got paint. Uh, Mac, I know, definitely has the equivalent of a snipping tool. I forget exactly what the commands are. And I'm sure that Mac has a version of paint too that you could use. Okay, let's get back to the lab.